Welcome to Internet Quality Academy. The channel is for the quality control engineer, site engineer, and the civil engineer who are working in the construction field. In this channel, we are dealing with anything and everything which is required to get success in the construction. Today also, I'm going to discuss about a construction material that is now rapidly and widely used in the construction. That is GGBS or ground generators blast furnace slag. It is used in the concrete, is used in the cement production everywhere. So what is GGBS? how the GGBS is produced, how it is beneficial for the construction and what is the physical and chemical properties of GGBS as per Indian standard that I will discuss everything in this video. So stay tuned until the end to get the full information and if you are new in my channel, kindly subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that whenever I upload a new video, you will get immediate notification. So without wasting time, let's jump into the subject that is GGBS enhancing concrete performance and sustainability in construction. So what we need to know first that what is GGBS? The GGBS is a byproduct of iron and steel manufacturing of obtained by quenching molten iron slag from a blast furnace in water steam to produce the glossy or granular product that is often then dried and ground into a fine powder. So that is the GGBS. So it is a byproduct in the iron industry. So whenever it is a byproduct, either it will be disposed to where it will be disposed, disposed to the earth. And again, it will be against the environment. Now, what do we need to know? We need to use that one or you to reuse that one so that there will be a less uh, impact on the environment. So that is why GGBS are introduced in the construction. Now, how the GGBS is produced? Eh? It is a brief, but uh, I will uh, break it down in simple uh, steps. That is, what is the raw material for the iron industry? That is iron ore, coke and the limestone. These are the three raw material are using. So what is in the blast furnace operation? The next part. So what is happening? The raw material, what that is the iron ore, coke and limestone. The raw materials are fed into the blast furnace. The furnace operates at high temperatures about 1500 degrees centigrade. Then iron is produced by reducing iron ore using coke as a reducing agent and limestone as a flux. So these are the basic procedure that you need to know, but there is a different, different things and there is a huge you about the procedure we need to know. But this is the basic procedure. This is the blast furnace operation we are operating when you are producing the iron. Then what is happening? Then formation of slag. During the process, what is happening? During the production of iron, impurities combine with limestone to form molten slag. So when the impurities happen there, then it is molten as a slag. Then molten slag floats on top of the molten iron. So it is coming on the top as the uh, molten slag. So first is raw material, then it is a blast furnace operation, then formation of slags. Then slag stepping. Now the slags is coming into the floats in the iron ore. Then the molten slag is stepped off separately from the molten iron. So this the slag is not uh, is a part of iron. So this has to separate it. So this is uh, separating and tapping and the separating. Then granulation. What is happening? Then the molten slag is rapidly cooled with water and air. So what is the molten slag the separating from the iron ore? Then it is rapidly cooled with water and air. This rapid cooling process creates granulated slag, glass-like particles. So whatever the whenever iron process in the blast furnace, the slag is formed, then slag is tapped and then slag is separated and is uh, cooling and then the granulation is happening. Don't know what is happening. Then the granulated slag is then dried to remove any excess moisture. So this has uh, given the time to drying. Then it's become grinding. What is then dried granulated slag is ground into a fine powder. And this final product is known as the ground granulated slab blast furnace slag. Then it is storage and dispatch. The GB is stored in silos and ready for use for dispatch for the construction site. So this way the GGBS is produced. How? The first part is always the uh, what is the raw material and then raw material are using in the blast furnace slag, then formation of slag then slag tapping, then granulation, then drying, then grinding, then final product, and then dispatch. So these are the 
process, then the normal, this is a very typical process and in the very basic that the GGBS is production. Now we need to know what is the relevant IS code for the GGBS. First is IS 16714 2018, ground granulated blast furnace slacks for use in cement, mortar and concrete specification. And IS 12089-1987 reaffirmed in 2018, specification for granulated slag for the manufacturing and Portland slag cement. These two are we are using for the GGBS. The next part is what is the chemical properties and the physical properties. In the chemical properties and the physical properties in table 1 and table 2 of IS 16174 it is mentioned. So let's jump into the code itself and then we will uh, know what is the physical properties and the chemical properties. So here it is in table 1 of IS 16714. 2018 it is described what is the chemical requirement or the property see what is the constitution or the raw ingredient that is magnesium oxide magnesium oxide uh, and this is manganese oxide magnesium oxide sulfide sulfur sulfate uh, insoluble residue chloride content loss of ignition then cao plus mgo plus one third of l2o3 divided by si2 that is then co mgo and l2 this percent also so what is the percentage by mass? See here you can say manganese oxide maximum 5.5, ma magnesium oxide maximum 17%, sulfur di sulfide oxide 2%, sulfate 3%, so insoluble residue 3%, chloride content 0.1%. See chloride content is very less. That is why it can, use, uh, it can be used in the concrete because chloride ion is not good for the concrete for as well as the iron. It will uh, start corroding. So that is why chloride percent is very less. And loss of ignition is 3% and here is also uh, for generated slag with 2.5% MNO. So these are also the, the criteria and how we can mention this criteria tested method is IS4032. So whenever we are testing as per IS4032, it's basically for the cement. So here it is mentioned for the purpose of testing of GGBS as per IS4032, wherever reference of to the cement has been made in IS104, 4032, it may be read as GGBS. So this, it's, it will be the same procedure whatever we are using for the cement testing. The GGBS also too will be said because it is replacing the cement as a part replacement. So that is why it should satisfy the criteria, whatever the cement. So that is why it's tested as per I4032, which is the test procedure for the cement. So these are the chemical composition or the chemical requirement of the GGBS in table one of IS16714. Now we need to know the physical properties that is in table 2 of the same IS code that is IS 16714-2018. So what is the criteria see here it is fineness, uh, slag activity uh, and then compressive strength. So these are all the criteria that is for the cement that is fineness this should be 320 minimum. Okay and cement strength not less than 60% of control OPC 43. And in 28 is not 75% OPC 43. So here is the strength also is the criteria and that is saying in 28 days should not be less than of 75% control OPC 43 grade of mortar cube. So for the again it is a method what is mentioned for the cement again it will be read as a GGBS. And the slag activity also in saying slag activity index that is SAI shall be determined using blend of 50% GGBS and 50% of control OPC conforming to IS 106 having a total alkalis that is Na2O and 0.65 H2O not less than 0.6% and not more than 0.9%. So slag activity also to be measured and it should be point in between 0.6 and 0.9. The blend shall be tested in accordance with IS4031 part C for determining compressive strength of mortar. SI shall be determined as compressive strength of the mortar cube using blend and compressive strength of concrete control OPC mortar cube into 100%. So SI is the percentage that is Compressive strength of mortar cube and compression of control OPC and the mortar how is 50% GGBS and 50% OPC. So these are the activity or these are the physical requirement that we need to fulfill whenever we are dealing with the GGBS. So physical and chemical properties should be as per IS16714 in table 1 and table 2. Now 
chemical and physical properties we have already discussed. Now, what the next part is used in construction, where we can use the GGBS. First things, we can concrete production. As a partial replacement for cement in concrete, typically 35, 30 to 50 percent, we can use as a partial replacement of concrete, so it is a sustainable uh, use. So, then order in the mortar, used in the mortar to enhance workability. Then soil stabilization, it is used in very much in the soil stabilization, improving soil properties in geotechnology technical application then precast concrete employed in the uh, pre uh, production of the precast concrete element so in this way you can use the ggbs in the construction then we what is the benefit of the ggbs when why you are using ggbs yes it has the benefit first it has enhanced uh, increased the stable strength enhanced durability improved workability reduced uh, permeability and environmental benefit so that is why we are using in the part replacement of ggbs for the soil improvement so it has the if uh, immense use in the construction because it is a byproduct either way it is has to dispose so if you dispose directly to the environment it is going to against that environment it is a land contaminations air contamination water contamination will happen so if we are using in the ggbs we are improving the environmental benefits so these are the benefits of ggbs now how it is used in the sustainability part of construction that is it is reducing the carbon footprint using ggbs can significantly reduce the carbon emission associated with the cement production and all we know that whenever the cement is production, there is a carbon emission into the environment. Now, we are using GGBS as a replacement of the cement. So, that is why we are reducing the carbon footprint in the environment. Then, recycling industrial waste, utilizing a byproduct from the steel industry, reducing landfill and conservation of natural resources. So, Either way, whenever we are using uh, production of cement, we are taking from the natural sources. But if we are using the GGBS, that means we are uh, conserving the natural resources. And either way, it has to dispose if it is not using in the construction. Again, it will the contamination in the uh, land or water and air. So we are recycling the industrial waste. Then enhance the durability. Concrete with GGBS exhibit improved durability, reducing the maintenance and the repair needs. So, if the durability is increased, that means the maintenance will be more less. So, we are enhancing the durability. And the lower heat of hydration, the heat of hydration is very much important whenever the strength is developed. But at the same time, if the heat of hydration is more, then it exhibits the thermal crack in the concrete, which is not uh, good for the concrete. So, whenever we are using the GGBS, reduces the heat of hydration beneficial in mass concrete application to minimize the risk of thermal cracking so in this way also it is a sustainability construction and improve workability ggbs imports impairs better workability and pumpability of the concrete mix the next part is what is the moisture content that we need to know that moisture content the percentage what will be inside the ggbs it is in the is 16174 it is mentioned that it should be maximum one percent by mass and what is the glass content of the cement uh, ggbs that is also mentioned in the is 16174 in clause 5.3 that glass content of ggbs shall not be less than 85 percent when determined by the method of optical microscope in given in annexure C. And so, in the same ISO 16174 in the next year 3, it is described how to uh, mean, uh, test the glass content. But in the set, it is, should not be less than 85%. So, these two criteria also you need to satisfy whenever you are selecting GGBS for your project. That is chemical properties, physical properties, um, water content and the glass content of the GGBS. So, these are the all about the GGBS for the construction. What is GGBS? How the GGBS is produced? What is the chemical composition? What is the physical properties? And what is the sustainability in the construction? What is the use of GGBS? So, these are all and I hope you find it useful. And if you find it useful, kindly subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that whenever I upload a new video, you will get immediate notifications. And I'm waiting for your valuable comments so that from your valuable comment, everybody will be benefited. And if you want to know anything more about quality control and construction please let me know i'll come with more content like this and thank you once again for watching me